So there are two types of pain. There is acute pain, which is immediate pain after an injury, but if it lasts more than three to six months, that will be a chronic pain problem. And here in the program, that's one of uh, the criteria that we have is chronic pain for more than three to six months. About two years ago, she laid down take a nap one day and woke up that afternoon and she said, Mom, I just don't feel good and put her in the shower and just uh, started screaming bloody murder. And she's got juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, but she's also got a, an amplified pain disorder. She was not able to go to school full-time, not dancing, no playing basketball. When I first met Dr. Santana, she asked me, are you sure you want to do our program? And I told her, yes, because I want something to keep down the pain low and not me feeling it. Pain programs really have to be quite intensive in their approach. Most patients we've seen here have seen many providers in many different institutions. But what they haven't done is come to a place where they're seen day in and day out for a series of days, up to a month long, focused directly on strengths and building back their capability. It's a three hour program. We have an hour of physical therapy, an hour of occupational therapy, and one hour of behavioral therapy. There are together the emotional and the sensory component of pain, and you have to have a balance between those two. That's why the behavioral component in our pain program is so important. So we teach kids how to understand how the pain signals in their body work and how they can overcome those signals. With Savannah, we addressed everything from physical rehabilitation to the psychology of learning how to breathe in order to manage the pain and dampen the signals. Savannah had created goals for herself um, to improve her mood at home, improve her interactions with her family, and definitely wanted to return to her sports and dance in school. Um, Mom took her back to the Ronald McDonald House where they were staying and practiced their exercises all night and then was ready for the next day. Well, they gave me this exercise. It's just think of a place that you wanted, you really want to be, and just forget about everything. We have weekly meetings with the team and then with the family so that they're able to hear feedback from us, give feedback of their own, and ask any questions so that we're all on the same page and all treating the child um, effectively. Savannah was uh, at a point where um, she could exercise some, but then felt that that pain would come on after the exercise and be overbearing. Uh, so she stopped doing her exercising or stopped being involved in the activity that she liked. Very often, kids will come in with anxiety. They've been fearing discomfort day in and day out. And so they're heightened in terms of feeling anxious. The first thing we need to do to break that cycle is get them moving again. Seeing that patient over and over and over, you create a bond with that patient and a real um, strong trust with that patient, which is really what we need to help push them to that next step. They uh, took a lot of time with her, with both of us, but especially her, because this was our last hope. If this didn't work, then we were just gonna have to keep on the medicine and keep on with the pain and just kind of live life best we could. Kids like Savannah, who's such a brave girl, are classic for us. They're kids who've been suffering, often in silence, for month after month after month. And what they need is a place where, again, they can get a variety of professionals putting their heads together and creating an intervention plan tailored to their needs. You know, my job is to have no or zero pain um, in all my patients, so I'm going to do anything that it's in my hands to figure out what's going on to treat it. Some of our patients come in in a wheelchair because of the pain and are able to leave walking fully. I am back to basketball. I really want to do softball. I'm going to dance a lot. 
You know, we always called her our little bouncing ball because she was always up doing something and now she's back to doing that again. Now, mind you, it's a, sometimes <laughs> it's like, uh, maybe I've created a monster, <laughs> but, but then again, you know, we're happy to see it back.